now. And with that, I am pleased to introduce the uh, moderator and first presenter for our session this evening, uh, Richard Van Gynaby, uh, the uh, Colorado River Outreach Coordinator for Trout Unlimited uh, out of Grand Junction, um, and uh, involved in a host of projects along the, uh, the Colorado River, and particularly in the middle Colorado area. Uh, and Richard also has the distinction of being um, a true Trout Unlimited lifer, uh, having been involved from his youth in a family that was involved with Trout Unlimited to his uh, career today as one of our excellent field staff helping all of us here in Colorado. So Richard, take it away. All right, thanks, uh, David, appreciate it. Um, thanks to everyone um, who's joined us this evening for taking your Wednesday evening to, uh, to uh, learn about how to get involved with the Colorado Water Plan. Um, a quick round of introductions um, helping me out tonight. I've got <clears throat> not only David Nickham, but, but Dan Omasta, CTU staff, and then pretty much all the Colorado Water Project staff members are, are here tonight. I think they all are. Um, just sort of a quick round. Um, we have Kevin Terry from the Rio Grande, Melly Whiting from the Southwest Basin, Carrie Dennison and Jesse Kruthop from the Gunnison, Uncompagre and North Fork, uh, Brian Hodge from the uh, Yampa White Green, and then uh, myself from the, from the Colorado. So each one of these people is gonna kind of be representing in a breakout room their own basin, because we know that all the basins are pretty unique um, most all these folks are heavily involved with or actually uh, sit a chair on the basin round tables. So um, I, I thought it would be really great and I was really glad that all of them could join us this evening um, and sort of rep their own, uh, their own basin. <clears throat> so let me, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, David, before um, we get too far into this, did we wanna put up um, something to just say who, where everybody's from, what basin they would like to be uh, going to in, in, a, in a breakout room. So if you guys could all sort of um, take this quick poll, just tell us where you're, uh, um, where you're from. That would be really helpful. But the, the reason we're doing this is that, you know, if, if we don't have somebody from a given basin, then we might uh, combine basins. Um, Dan, it's not letting me show the poll, so let me see if I can figure that out. I'll be able to do that. Here. Okay, so what, what, I, what I thought would be appropriate is if we've got at least two members um, from a given basin, then I think we'll use all of our breakout rooms. Um, if we've only got um, one, which it looks like in some cases or a lot of cases, that's the case. Um, we may want to combine them. So let's see um, when, when we get there um, what, what we've got, but it looks like maybe, <sighs> well, I'm almost thinking maybe we, we, we just stay in the main, main room and not even use the breakout room. Um, well, Richard, I think. Um, go ahead and end that polling for right now. The uh, polling uh, uh, inadvertently reset, so folks can double check and re-enter if you uh, did early on um, which basin you're in, and then we'll be able to share those results here. So uh, please uh, click on that uh, again if you haven't uh, re-clicked uh, your basin, and then here in about 10 seconds we should be able to pop, pop up the, uh, the results. Earlier, I saw about four people in the Colorado on that original poll. You know, and 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 really, I mean, we could uh, we could just go ahead and and and, and just do it one on one if 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 we wanted to. Um, I mean, because obviously, if somebody's shown up, then they're really interested, and they may become a really good conduit um, to you know get back to the chapter or or or, or dial it back in because that's really going to be one of my major topics tonight is not only how to get engaged with the Colorado Water Plan, but also to 
<clears throat> look at some things that I uh, saw recently on, on the TU National Strategic Plan um, that I think we might incorporate within, the, within our Colorado chapters and our TU National and CTU staffs um, to really sort of begin to integrate ourselves better um, and, and see if we can not only you know, um, influence the Colorado Water Plan update and the basin update, uh, VIP updates, but, um, but also to do other things um, other than that to, to really sort of begin a new day, if you will. So it, it, it looks like that's probably accounting for pretty much everyone, don't, don't you think? Yeah. So let's just go ahead and let, let's just go ahead and use the breakout rooms like we were going to. You can have a, you know, you that are, are there's only one person there, they can have a, a really one on one conversation where they can talk about something else that they want, um, you know, with your basin representative. But then we'll be coming back together to, uh, um, you know, to talk about some of the some of the questions that each one of us has um, for that one or more people uh, attending a, a breakout room. So I think what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Um, and get started with a presentation. So can everyone see the see my screen? Okay, good. So um, just to give you an idea, I, I, I've already sort of introduced this slide. Um, put this down. We're gonna do, um, <clears throat> this is, I'm gonna do a quick, not a quick introduction, probably a lengthy introduction. Um, and then we're gonna do the uh, basin breakout rooms um, where we're gonna discuss some of the things that I go over in this, in this introduction. Um, not only how to engage in the water plan, but some other basin specific measures like stream management plans, integrated water management plans, and some other things that I've, I've sort of added to this presentation. I, I think I was given way too much time to think about this. And um, so I've, I've got a lot of stuff in here. So after the breakout rooms, we'll return to the main room uh, for a basin report out. The, the basin reps will do that. So um, all you have to do is sort of uh, participate with them. So. Initially, the idea and objective for this session was to enable our chapters to engage in the Colorado Water Plan. And um, if you were around in 2013 through 15 and a chapter member, you probably were involved in some way or another in our first effort, our, our organization's effort to influence the what would be then the new um, Colorado Water Plan. Um, I think I heard from some CWCB staff that as an organization, TU probably did the best job of all the NGOs of influencing and, and sharing their thoughts and, and, and what they really wanted the Colorado Water Plan to be um, with Colorado Water Conservation Board. Um, we did an amazing job and, and I'm, I'm really compliment all of the chapters for writing individual letters, um, basin specific letters. They said it was really helpful rather than just receiving a bunch of uh, um, you know, uh, the same letter over and over just signed by different people. So that was a really great effort. We, we hope to keep that effort going as well this year. But about three, four weeks ago, I was on a, a national TU staff call and they went over the strategic national plan. And I thought there were some really interesting things that sort of paralleled our, our effort to get our chapters engaged in the Colorado water plan. And, and, and I thought those were really good, um, good things that we might also be thinking about it. And, and, and what we can essentially be doing is using the Colorado Water Plan and our effort to be engaged in that uh, to sort of test drive it. You know, that almost becomes the vehicle that sort of test drives some of these things that are, that are gonna be showing up soon in 
in a in a in an adopted um, strategic national um, TU plan. Um, so the the strategic plan that I, um, I I pulled I borrowed some slides from their presentation, and um, it has basically three elements. Um, there are some general definitions that I'd like to cover with you. Then there's this idea or this concept of of, of a of a base and wide portfolio, and then there are some strategies um, about how to get there. Um, so without any further ado, um, some of the general definitions I, I think were, were good. Um, this is their new call to action. I, I like the last sentence in particular, and it says it's, it's reiterating that one TU notion where we can collectively expand our scale of work and achieve far more enduring results for the, for the streams nationwide if we are operating as one. And we really need to leverage our, our, own, our own power, which, which I don't think we do a lot of times. Um, the vision, I think this is a new vision, um, healthy abundant populations of trout and salmon thrive in, in the waters across the US. Our mission, if you know it, uh, is number one right now. They are considering two others. Um, one is the, um, the, the second one, and, I, and, and it's, it's the third one I think is the one that we're gonna, probably going to, uh, going to go for. Um, says uh, with a diverse community of anglers and allies, um, we care for their, care for and recover the clean, uh, cold, clean waters that sustain America's native wild trout and salmon and all of us. So uh, what they're doing is they're trying to add in this notion that we're not just doing this on our own. We need allies, other conservationist organizations, as, as well as consumptive water users. And I, and I think that's something that um, our staff knows well um, in, in, in our work with the agricultural community. So the goal um, I think will probably end up being number 1B because it starts talking, it uses the word portfolio of priority waters for native and wild and trout and salmon. Um, and and, and the, the idea of a portfolio can, can be a lot of different things, but I think that it's probably gonna be number two um, where people are gonna try and, they're gonna try and get folks to use this portfolio concept. It, it's not, they're not being dictatorial, I don't think. Um, they're, they're just suggesting that, that it's kind of an interesting way to look at your basin. And, and I don't think it has to deal exactly with native um, or, or wild trout and, and salmon. It, it can be other things um, if, if you really think about it. So those were, the, um, those were the general definitions. Now to get into this portfolio concept, <clears throat> this is the, uh, it, it's as if it, it's an analogous to a, um, to a financial portfolio where somebody, where a portfolio manager for somebody tries to diversify that portfolio so that it can um, withstand their, um, changes in the market. Um, so that if somebody, if the stock market goes down severely, you're diversified enough so that that doesn't crash your entire, your entire uh, portfolio. Um, the way that they're doing this is to, and this came out of, this, this is a map of uh, Lahontan cutthroat trout. Um, this is a idea that came from Amy Hack and Jack Williams. Jack Williams is re retired from our science crew um, and they worked on this together in 2012. But it's this idea of the three R's, it's a, it's a framework. And what it does is it says, you know, we need to have representation of these fish, um, genetic life history, ecological. We need to have a resilience and that represents strongholds. So in other words, if you're mapping it out and you're looking at, you're looking at where are we concentrated and then duplicity. And, and all this is, is just an effort to try and look at it from a, from a 30,000 foot view and say, all right, here's a strong world. Here's where we have duplicity. If we're gonna throw money at something, um, does it make sense to do an isolated population? Is that going to help our resiliency in the future in the, in the, in the face of climate change and, and, and other um, you know, invasive aquatics, um, all sorts of things. So it. It, it helps us to look at it. And as I said before, I don't think that the, that the portfolio concept necessarily needs to be strictly this with, with, with fish. It could be something like, you could look at, um, for instance, flows um, or something like that, where you're looking at what given sub basins within a basin generate in terms of water, their propensity to generate more than an adjacent basin or something like that. And, and you could be looking and saying, Okay, so if I'm going to be doing some process-based restoration in terms of beaver dam analogs or PALs or something like that, then maybe I start thinking about um, 
reinforcing the flows that are coming out of a, of a, of a, uh, a sub basin that really has generated some water and has a fairly good track record in the even even in the face of, of climate change. So this is another example. Sorry. Um, another example up in the Puget Sound, um, and this is sort of another way of looking at it. And this is a way of looking at, you know, defining rivers and saying, for instance, we're going to make the um, Skagit and Sauk rivers um, catch and release only, and we're going to make the other rivers like the Snohomish and, and the Snoqualmie and things like that. We're going to make that catch and keep and catch and release. Um, but it also starts to talk about things like. We're going to manage this fishery for, or we want to encourage our, our state to manage the fishery for wild versus um, versus hatchery stocks. But it's another example of where this sort of generalized portfolio kind of an idea can can take you, and 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 how I think it'll help um, chapters in their own subbasins to really prioritize what their goals are and where they want to go. Um, as I mentioned, there were some strategies that were thrown out. There were eight strategies thrown out. I pulled just three slides from this, and um, I thought that these were good because it, what it does is it gives, um, you know, a current and a future kind of a status. So it says, you know, in 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 the area of protection and restoration, um, you know, our chapters often tend to be smaller, disconnected restoration projects. It's like if somebody has an idea. Then they come in and they kind of do like a one-off, and and it doesn't. I'd like to see it fit more back with that portfolio kind of an idea, and that's and that's represented underneath the future there, where where it says you know coordinate conservation actions to portfolio goals. So it says let's step back and and really see what our portfolio goals are, and then make sure that all of our protection and restoration efforts are going in that in that direction, um, and and they don't have to, but but you know I think it it would lend itself to uh, a, a more impactful um, way in which we can influence our, our, uh, our own sub-basins and basins. Um, advocacy, um, again, it's, it's in, and, and this kind of goes, goes to, the, um, to the being engaged in the water plan. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like right now, it's like, oh my God, um, you know, let's call out all the cars and, you know, we, let's, you know, there's a fire, it's a fire drill. Um, what we, I think we should be doing more is um, getting out ahead of these things um, and really trying to, you know, almost look at the portfolio concept in terms of, in terms of adv advocacy, but really trying to do a better job of getting out in front of some of these things and making sure that um, um, people are, are, you know, hearing from us and things like that. I mean, for instance, um, you, I'm sure you're all aware of the, um, the Colorado River District 7A, at least those of us up here in the in the northwest part of the state, where they want to increase the the mill levy a little bit, it's going to help the Colorado River District, um, uh, and it's money that they desperately need. But we've done a pretty good job for the last four or five weeks of getting stuff out, getting LTEs in the in the papers, um, you know, going around getting lawn signs out and things like that. And it's to the point where you know our our, our you know very conservative. Um, commissioners and and uh, you know some of the club twenty and folks like that are are all supporting it, which is great in a in a very tax adverse climate. Uh, strategy, sort of the organizational structure. I think that this um, you know our our current uh, ten, uh, tendency is to be programmatic, and of course that kind of silos and stovepipes people and their and their and their work, um, and and people just don't even know what they're doing. So the future vision sees a more regional form will follow function with multi-department support at all levels. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but um, you know, I think that the future for us here in Colorado is to really focus on our home waters. And what's great is, is that you know, Colorado Trout Unlimited chapters have TU national staff or CTU staff in all of the different basins pretty much. Um, you can go to somebody and within the bigger basin, you can talk about a smaller basin within that sub basin or talk about some you know, issue at the, at the basin wide level. But I don't know that it's even necessarily regional. I think it really depends on that portfolio and what you decide there and let that portfolio decide where and what sub basins are gonna be you know, uh, floating to the top of your, um, to the top of your um, list for monies or, or effort or, or work and projects. So um, that's what I learned from the from the Trout Unlimited strategic plan, and I and, and I'm hoping that you know guys uh, you'll have a chance to chat about this a little bit, 
in the um, in, in the breakout session, or you can you know jump in um, you know if you've got a question or something like that right now. Um, but I'm really I I think it has some good ideas, and I think it's it, it kind of lays out a a framework or a, or a highway map for getting our staff national and CTU more dialed in with uh, with with our chapter um, resources. So the other thing now we'll come to what the presentation was supposed to be about. Um, Colorado Water Plan and the round, round, uh, round Table Basin Implementation Plans. Um, just for the acronyms, um, CWP is the Colorado Water Plan um, and the round tables are currently have just begun last spring doing their basin implementation plans or BIPs, BIPs. Um, and, and, that's, and, and those are the two acronyms that you need to know. The other one will be IPPs, that's um, Identified uh, Projects and Processes. Um, that is basically, I think even CWCB is starting to call that just the projects list. So it's, it's the basins project list, um, which is a lot better, I think. So um, current status, a real quick historical summary for folks. Um, really this, the, the story begins, I think, uh, as far as the Colorado Water Plan with the 2010 Statewide Water Supply Initiative, affectionately known as SWAZI 2010. Um, then in 2013, Governor Hickenlooper issues an executive order that he wants a Colorado water plan in place by to the end of 2015. Um, and so they, um, the basin roundtables take SWAZI and start to create basin implementation plans. And basically basin implementation plans are simply plans that identify um, gaps in both the consumptive and non-consumptive uses within the basin. And it generates a project list where projects are supposed to address or in some way mitigate those, those gaps, those identified um, gaps in, in consumptive and non-consumptive use. Um, so that's pretty much what, what happened. And that's those BIPs are the, the, the they help to inform and really create um, the, the Colorado Water Plan. And then the Colorado Water Plan took those BIPs and then in chapter 10 created, um, you know, um, goals and objectives, which I thought was good. Those, those were actually realized um, and, and realizable goals and objectives. So um, the end of 2015, we get our first Colorado water plan. Then in 2016 and 17, the CWC begins sort of this SWAZI update and renames it um, the technical update. Um, so SWAZI went away and the technical update now replaces it. It's essentially the same thing, but they're looking at some of the different modelings that they used in SWAZI 2010 and trying to update those and trying to be more accurate in terms of how water is used, for instance, um, in agriculture and how evapotranspiration is measured, things like that. 2018, CWCB assembles an integrated work group um, that comes from the roundtables mostly, um, and they begin to define the focus and content of the updated BIPs. Then um, they selected Brown and Caldwell as the general contractor for the BIP process. So they're sort of the umbrella um, contractor. And then each basin roundtable selected their own local expert. So each of you in different basins can, goes to the, your local expert. They're the people that are being paid to facilitate this process with the roundtable. 20 to 2020 to 21, the BRTs will be updating their BIPs um, and roundtables will finish updating their BIPs in I think at the end of the year, November of 2021, and then in, that will help to uh, then uh, inform the Colorado Water Plan update um, after that, where they, where they take those final BIPs and reincorporate them into the, uh, into the plan. So just to kind of give you a, a sort of a graphical image um, and, and sort of review what I just went over. Um, th these are a couple of slides that I stole from our uh, local expert um, SGM, who's, who's heading up the Colorado Basin Roundtables BIP. Um, 2010, uh, that was the Colorado Water Supply Initiative. Um, and then we see the Basin Implementation Plans feeding the Colorado Water Plan in 2015. 2017, this was an update on Chapter 10 on the goals and objectives to say, it was kind of like a re little report card uh, to say, how are we doing? Um, and, and Becky Mil Mitchell was um, busy doing that. Then in 2019, we actually finish up the technical update um, and begin the process of, of updating the BIP. So that's where we're headed now. We've begun that process by working on the projects list. Um, and then, as I just said, in November 2021, those will be complete and we will update the water plan. 
I wanted to just cover real, real quick. You will see this in the technical update. This is central or central to the to the update. Um, there are five different scenarios. They go through sort of this, you know, and along along the top, the scenarios are described: business as usual, a weak economy, cooperative growth, adaptive innovation, and hot growth. Um, they all have definitions that you can go ahead and read. One of the really interesting ones, though, is to look at how adaptive innovation um, fares against all the others. It's, it's a very interesting when you start to look into it. But I, but I would uh, strongly encourage, rather than me sitting here trying to explain this, um, go in and, and you can you know, get a description of what these things mean. Um, they all cover, uh, obviously, on the, on the uh, y-axis, there's water supply. Um, <clears throat> climate, um, uh, status, uh, social values, agricultural needs, and m &I needs. Um, those are the five categories that are compared back against these different scenarios. So um, they think that these scenarios represent equally plausible futures. Um, you can argue a little bit with maybe one or two of them, but, but I think the one that really stands out is sort of unique is this adaptive innovation. So I would def definitely take a look at that and just kind of get the feel for what that, what that is, because this is really central to the technical update. So trying to stay on time here. Um, in, in, in summary, um, the TU National Strategic Plan is going to be presented to the National Board later this month. And I, I think probably will either be adopted this month or uh, adopted at their next meeting in, in February 2021. Um, and, and I really, I see this plan as, as really being you know, intended to be a guide for our um, for our chapters around around the country. Um, it's not dictatorial, and I, and I and I think that you can choose the things that from it, like this concept of a, of a portfolio and, and and things like that, and how you want to deal with um, deal with the different strategies. But but it's a guide, and 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 you can cherry pick it as you like, and and sort of fit it into um, you know fit it into your own thing. So. Um, you know, I think that these, these these things are really important to um, pick up and to use, but but don't be don't be thinking that you absolutely have to use them. But I but I think that they're important for um, you know the portfolio concept and the strategies like protection, restoration, advocacy, changing the structure of how we operate to, um, will really help us ramp up our chapter contributions to home waters. So um, in the short term, I, I think that the roundtable BIP updates. And the Colorado Water Plan update processes, as I said before, I think almost become the vehicle that we test drive um, some of this national um, TU national strategic plan stuff out with. Um, it, and, and it's it's how do we how do you guys get involved with staff, and how do we the staff make sure that we're involving um, involving ourselves with you? Because again, we we want this to be chapter specific, basin specific, so that what we're really trying to do is to help you define your own vision, goals, and projects, and 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 how you want to how you want to drive your car there. Um, so um, I would emphasize that um, that effort begins with the chapter contributions to the roundtable projects list or IPP list. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I, and I think that the basin representatives are going to stress this as well. Um, they they being the experts in Brown and Caldwell, um, really pushed the roundtables hard this summer to update their 2015 lists. Um, we did the best we could with it, um, but what's interesting is that right now they're trying to get this done by the end of the year, and I've heard dates that are even shorter than that. Um, they say that we will be able to add projects to the list um, in the future all the way through the process, but they're really trying to get us as far down the road as we possibly can. And I think the further down the road we get, the longer that project or whatever it is has been on the list, um, the better off it's gonna be, or the better chance it has of being realized through CWCB funding um, and, and, and just general support. So I think that's really, it's, it's really important to be thinking about that. And, and I see chapters as really having a very strong role in this. Um, I mean, if, if you, you know, if you're looking at a chapter and they know all these streams, they fish them all the time. Um, they know when they're high, when they're low, when they're hot, when they're cold. Um, they know these things. I mean, they'll, the, the CWCB wants to hear from, from, from Trout Unlimited. Um, I think they really respect 
um, us and respect the work that we do and respect the chapter's opinions uh, about how they want to govern their own basins. So really, um, let's try and focus with our staff and, and let's focus together that if you have any ideas about a project that needs to go on this list, let's try and figure out what it is, prioritize it and get it on the list. Um, uh, because I think it's really going to stand a, a very good chance of being with with limited funding and, and particularly for the next couple of years, it'll stand a much better chance of, of, of getting the funding that it needs. So um, with that, I think we'll go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. But I, I think we'll go ahead and, and, and jump into the different um, uh, breakout rooms. And th when you're in there, um, the, each of the basin representatives will um, you know, chat with you about um, not only how do you get involved with your own roundtable in your own basin, like who are your contacts and things like that. Um, but we're also going to try and um, they'll, they'll be sharing some different um, projects and things like that, which I think are projects which might speak to this notion of, of, of being a portfolio kind of a kind of a project um, and, and see and, and they may not, may not pertain to all the all the unique chapters in a, in a large basin. But it's just to give you an idea of, 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 of what the concept uh, or what, what the portfolio concept really is and, and, what, it, and what it could be. So um, with that, um, we burned up 35 minutes. Do you want to, why don't we try and jump into these, um, um, into these breakout rooms? So David, do you, or David or do you, do you have that list of the of the different rooms? Yep. Um, do you want people to just self-select? Yeah. Why don't we just do that? I mean, we we did that on the on on the test call yesterday, and it was pretty seamless. Okay. And do you want me to set a timer for it? We had it at fifteen yes, minutes. 20, um, Twenty minutes is what we were 20? thinking. Okay. Um, but I would but I would suspect that probably fifteen is going to be enough. Um, so like shoot shoot for fifteen. You got twenty. Okay. All right, we'll open those up now. Thank you. So hopefully everybody can see that and you can choose. Um... Barb, Gary. Okay, so at least two of us, all three of us now found our way here. And you have to be able to unmute. Uh, this part, we want to uh, make sure you have the chance to, uh, to talk, ask questions and, and share. We should have some uh, I saw a few other folks that I know are from our uh, our base. Right. Um, uh, yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> hopefully, they'll be uh, uh, popping on here in just a second. Mm -hmm. David, did you turn your camera off? You're looking Set. anonymous. There you go. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This yeah. is Barb. I'm. I'm going to keep it muted because I'm managing two dogs as a single dog mom tonight. So <laughs> okay. they're kind of noisy. I'll just unmute when I need to chat. All right. Well, hopefully some of the, you know, breakout room option and, and getting in here. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and share a couple of things with you all just to starting point before we jump into the uh, to the questions um, uh, and questions that you all might have. So um, we are in the area of the South Platte and Metro Roundtables. Um, that's a function of the um, original uh, Water in the 21st Century Act uh, that set us up with uh, separate roundtables recognizing sort of the 
intense demands and unique challenges associated with urban growth in and around the metro area, uh, as well as the larger South Platte. That said, for planning purposes, um, while the roundtables are separate, um, the South Platte roundtable that picks up the rest of the South Platte Basin and the Metro are working closely together on a unified basin plan, sort of recognizing that fundamentally we are all part of the South Platte. Uh, so you'll see that we're from two different roundtables, but uh, uh, it's a unified planning effort. Um, you know, when Richard talked about the portfolio idea, um, I realized that we already had one example where that was happening um, uh, uh, in, in our basin, uh, uh, and that's with uh, greenback recovery plans. Um, really, uh, you know, you've got on here, I see sort of five different projects that are part of the current portfolio of greenback restoration in our basin. Um, George and Cornelius Creeks, uh, the Pooter Headwaters uh, project uh, up around Longar Reservoir, Headwaters of Clear Creek, assessment of uh, Bear Creek up in and around the uh, um, Mount Evans Wilderness area, and uh, Rock Creek in the Headwaters of Terriol. Uh, and really, each of these are projects at you know, different scales, but that are designed to collectively uh, create a stronger foothold for greenbacks by working side by side. And you know, the current conditions uh, with the uh, uh, Cameron Peak Fire really underscore why this matters. If we're looking at trying to protect a species, and we had been, for example, hanging all of our efforts solely on the Pooter headwaters, those efforts would be very much at risk right now um, uh, because the fire has mm -hmm. been right through that area. So um, that's, a, that's a, an example in sort of a practical way of how some of our different chapters and each of these projects has different chapters involved with it as well. Uh, West Denver, Cutthroat, Evergreen, uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Flycasters up in the Fort Collins area. Um, so uh, it's... Uh, you know, one example of how that philosophy could be applied to projects in our basin. Now, with the basin plan itself, uh, just wanted to, to sort of let you know some of the things that we are looking at as a roundtable and introduce some of the folks who are involved with that. Uh, as, as Richard mentioned, we're updating the project list, um, and uh, that ranges uh, from the projects that are shovel ready or in some cases you know ongoing programs that are being implemented to uh projects that are purely at a conceptual phase um you know or, or just getting started in terms of planning um so uh i've reached out to a number of the front range chapters for your uh project that might fit into this but uh it, that's one of the places we have a chance to be involved uh, in our roundtable we're also trying to look at with our environmental and recreation committee how we want to look at understanding stream health and contemplating what it means to have an environmental gap, so to speak. Uh, a lot of Swazi was built around identifying water gaps uh, that are part of what we need to address. Um, the map you see here on the slide is of focus areas, and that's sort of one way of prioritizing important sections of the stream, and uh, we'll be revisiting those in our basin as well. And it runs the gamut from sections uh, that you can see there, like the uh, uh, South Platte River that's familiar to, to uh, you know, many of us, and, and, and uh, well loved as a fishery to systems like a smaller creek like Box Elder Creek up there near Fort Collins that's uh, focused on native plains fish. Um, another thing that we're trying to see more of in our basin and it started to happen in the uh, in the St. Rain, we're looking at one on Clear Creek, uh, getting going, uh, Big Thompson, our, our stream management plan. And I wanted to quickly turn it over to one of my colleagues on the Metro Roundtable, Darren Beck, to, to just briefly describe what SMPs are about. Sure, David. Are you guys hearing me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, and hi, everybody. Um, yeah, it's it's exciting. So the stream management plan efforts are included in the in the Colorado Water Plan. Um, the really kind of the mechanism in which environmental and recreation interests um, can be um, can be included in some of these multi-use projects that are happening throughout the, the basin and the state. Um, they're they're really to me they're really exciting because they're they're very collaborative. So what it really is is a way for the community and stakeholders to get together and discuss how they can better manage um, their basin. And that in that geographic scope is really it's not defined. It can be what 
whatever works best for the for the stakeholders involved. But um, to figure out a way to to work within the priority system, to to and the existing management of the system to promote um, ecosystem health and um, the resiliency, which which David had, had mentioned on. So it's um they're 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 plans that are grassroots. They can be something that comes up from um, flood damage that we've seen in the past. Um, they can arise through um, water quality issues. Um, uh, Gross Reservoir is a good, is a good um, example of an environmental pool and a stream management plan that was developed um, to figure out how to use those releases best to, um, for environmental and rec purposes. Um, so they, they can really be tailored to whatever it is the basin um, stakeholders and community want it to be. And they're very collaborative. So they really have to begin with um, open and honest communication so that everybody understands what they are. I think when they started, they there was a little bit of hesitation in that when environmental and rec starts looking at decreed water rights, um, people were like, well, you know, good luck with that. Th th this is my water. We have, we have a water supply. We have goals that we need to meet. And, and every one of us are part of those goals. And so um, there was a little bit of hesitancy, I think, from the start. But now we've got enough examples of stream management plans throughout the state uh, where we can really start to see the benefits um, for the, the natural environment as well as the community, uh, the, the economy, um, you know, the history that, you know, agriculture is always um, represented in these stream management plans. Um, so, you know, there's the culture and the history there, um, economics of the agri of agriculture and the water rights. And so it's, um, in my mind, they're very respectful, they're very collaborative, and they're a new way to look at management within the watershed to, um, to, to promote um, environmental and rec, which really hasn't had that type of exposure and priority as, as some of the other water uses. Thanks, Darren. Um, whoops, let me jump back. The um, another thing that we're looking at in our basin, uh, partly a reflection of, of you know the urbanization in, in our area, is efficiency goals and measures, water conservation. And uh, one of our point people really trying to drive that issue is Tom Arnold, uh, who is uh, a member of our Denver chapter and a member of the Metro Roundtable as well. Tom, you want to say just a couple words about? Sure. Where you see this going in the process? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you, David. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, well, one of, the, um, one of the big issues that's coming up in the next 20 or 30 years is that we have all this population growth in the South Platte Basin. We're going to have about 60% population growth over the next 30 years, but we really don't have any more water. So the round table, the Metro round table and the South Platte round table are beginning to try to come to grips with what that means for everybody who uses the water in the river. And as David said, what I've been pressing is the idea that the municipal suppliers <clears throat> who take most of the water out of the river should begin to uh, set interim uh, goals for conservation. Uh, right now, about half of the water that uh, a, a utility like Denver Water takes out of the river is actually used for outdoor water use. So I have suggested to the uh, municipal suppliers that they adopt a goal of a 5% reduction in their current uh, outdoor water use figures. And um, I'm hoping that that suggestion will be approved by the municipal, municipal suppliers and then by the whole round table. Um, and that's sort of the direction that I'm going because I think that unless the municipal suppliers can agree to cut back on their demand uh, using water conservation as the primary goal, um, there just isn't gonna be enough water in the river for any of these other uh, recreational uh, and environmental uses. 
And I just want to pick up on a couple of things that, that um, Richard talked about a few minutes ago. The portfolio, I think the portfolio is a great idea, but I think it's really important for TU chapters to be able to prioritize the stretches that are the most important. Because if you say that, you know, most rivers in Colorado potentially are trout uh, resources, I think that makes it very hard for the people who are making decisions to focus on what's really important. And I, I see the, the portfolio that Richard talked about and the focus areas which were identified in this, in this uh, plan that David's put up on the screen as really uh, coinciding with each other. And I think one of the things that Trout Unlimited chapters can do is to try to prioritize what they think are the, the most important, the most critical stretches to protect. And then the second part that you can that you can add is to get involved in the stream management uh, decisions about how much water is necessary for each of those stretches. Because right now we're we're in the process of trying to figure out how much water is needed for different uses in the river, whether they're boating or fishing or wildlife or wetland preservation, all these different interests have to have a certain amount of water to be, to be, um, to, to be useful. And so you guys can figure out and hopefully present to the round tables what you think are the minimum stream flows in the stretches or reaches that you think are the most uh, important. So, and, and, you know, getting these into the IPP list is a great idea. The problem is right now, almost all of the projects in the IPP list are, have been proposed by municipal suppliers. I don't think there are, I don't think there are any projects that I would consider environmental on that IPP list. And the list is supposed to be shovel ready. That's what, that's what POLIS wants is shovel ready projects. So um, if we can come up with a project and get it on the list, I think that would be great. Uh, I just don't have a lot of uh, confidence that we'll be able to do that in the next year. So I, I encourage all of you to think about those projects bring them to me, bring them to David or Darren, and we can talk about them and see if there's a way to get them on the list. So that I'd really be interested in questions that people have about the process and where we are now. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. I want to introduce one more person uh, with an eye towards some of those ag environmental partnerships and also for those of you who are in chapters outside of the metro area. Um, Kelsey Holloway is your environmental rep on the South Platte Roundtable. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, I'm the environmental rep, uh, kind of from more the eastern part of the state in um, the lower South Platte Basin. Um, but our roundtables together, our ENR team has done a really good job of, um, I guess, uh, combining our efforts with other uh, priorities within our basin. Uh, it's really hard to identify how much water environmental and rec needs, uh, what we need for environmental and rec purposes. Um, how many CFS do we need or how many acre feet of water does a bird need, does a fish need? It's really hard to quantify that. So I think a lot of our projects um, need to be combined with other interests within the South Platte Basin. So these multi-use projects are really important. Um, and out east, the um, we've come, or I guess within the entire basin, but um, there's a project that's we've been talking about that's combining efforts between our ag. Um, uh, our ag teams and our environmental and rec teams to identify what, um, how, how our needs rely on agriculture, at least 
out east, I think the same can be say, said in other parts of the basin as well. But um, a lot of the wetlands and riparian habitat out east uh, relies on flows from agriculture, whether it's canals, ditches, um, reservoirs. Uh, a lot of the properties I work on out there for wetland habitat uh, exist only because of seep from ditches or uh, groundwater flows from irrigation. So there's a really great big tie between environmental um, and rec needs and agriculture. So we'd like to really look into how much they actually rely on each other and see if that can be a, a bigger push towards combining efforts into um, within our basin for future projects. Um, because uh, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard for people just to see the benefits of maybe environmental reasons alone or recreation alone. It's, they kind of come as secondary views, but um, if we can tie them in with other uses, uh, it could help us out a lot. Thank you, Kelsey. Uh, just let everyone know uh, we are trying to get a little extra time, but I'd like to jump now into uh, uh, one of the questions that we were given, which really is um, how some of you all think you personally or your chapters might want to engage in the CIP update. Now you've sort of got a flavor for some of some of the possibilities uh, from, from stream management planning to, uh, to uh, uh, irrigation district partnerships um, to, uh, to water conservation. Um, what, what do you see as some of the ways that you might want to get involved? And, uh, uh, I guess uh, you can, I've tried to give you all permission to unmute, but if any of you are having trouble, just hit somebody in the chat to let me know that you uh, have something you'd like to share. But uh, uh, yeah. I'll see if, I mean, go ahead, Darren. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll kind of start the conversation just to get the ball rolling. Um, if I am cut off in 11 seconds, I guess we'll just figure it out. But um but I, so I'm a member of the West Denver Toronto Unlimited chapter, and we just started the stream management plan. Breakout room will close in a minute. Um, so we, we our chapter um, has been talking about starting a stream management plan, in particular, an integrated water management plan, which is also including consumptive uses, which is agriculture and, and municipality, uh, municipal use. So we, um, through the Colorado Water Plan, have um, sat down, understood the benefits of the this, of this stream management plan process um, to protect uh, environment, and to protect flows in the basin, and um, have gone through the process now of applying for a grant from the CWCB to, to see if we could sit down with stakeholders and start that engagement process. So, um, you know, that's kind of the, the real world. That's what we, we started to do. I mean, some of that was from you know, my experience and other members' experience in stream management planning um, to be able to bring that. Oh, we got booted. Yeah, sorry, everybody. I don't know how um, it wouldn't allow me to add more time. So once we had chosen the 20 minutes, it just kind of kept it as that, so. Okay. Interest from from the other roundtables, uh, Richard. Uh, we could relaunch the uh, uh, change. You should be able to relaunch it. But if everyone else already finished and it's just us in the south class that uh, that were laggards, um, we can try to line up a future opportunity for our for our group or even uh, for those who might want to from the south class. We can stay on this call after uh, after other groups. Uh, yeah, well, I can. David, we, we didn't have much time uh, in our group for people to ask questions, which is unfortunate. We can certainly restart them. Um, we just need to decide how much time. Um, and then some people had trouble getting in. So. Okay. So why don't we, what, you, can you, can you do that, Shannon? And then, because um, mm -hmm. we were, we were kind of, or I was slow. Um, sure. I was too wordy, apparently. Um, sure. So we, how long do we want to go this time? Uh, maybe just another 10 minutes, you think, guys? That'd be good. Okay, let's do let's do another 10 minutes, okay. and then we'll try and come back and do the best we can with that sort of reporting out. And I think that 
you know, the, the other thing too is that we can always write it down and then and then make it available to everybody if we don't get um, this all done by by um, eight thirty. All right. And we'll why don't you give us fifteen just so that we don't uh, um, get booted <laughs> hard uh, this time again? I think okay. uh, I think the Gunnisons got wrapped up, so we're all right. we're good. I will open those rooms again, and you guys can um, move back into them. All right, um, I'm going through to unmute you all. Um, I'd like to jump back into to what we were just talking about, which is uh, thoughts on um, uh, how your chapter might want to engage with the water plan. Darren discussed the West Denver's efforts on a stream management plan with, uh, um, with Clear Pick. Are there some others who, as your brains are starting to roll on some of those have ideas about where you might like to plug in? So David, um, this is Gary Swanson. I'm with uh, the Boulder Flycasters chapter. And uh, Darren earlier talked about, oops, my dog just jumped up on the couch. Uh, Darren earlier talked about the gross reservoir expansion. And that's one of those ginormous mega projects that has a, a nice environmental um, mitigation plan that was all worked out uh, years ago, but what the stream management plan we're working on is this little nine mile stretch of South Boulder Creek and our projects are, um, you know, like hundred thousand or $50,000 projects, not $500 million dam expansions. And so it, it seems like, um, we're talking more about big things and big concepts and what we're what our chapter is actually working on is things like removing or modifying a, a diversion structure to provide for better fish passage and so I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how these little projects fit into these ginormous um, super strategic goals I think at least part of that is is that a collection of little projects uh, working towards common problems can add up to a big total impact. And I might kick this over to Barb Luna to talk a little bit about the St. Drain because uh, they're looking at some similar issues like fish passage on some of their streams mm -hmm. uh, as well as the kind of the, the water plan. Well, I could definitely see fish passage being a, a portfolio basically for um, this area. So uh, I'm Barbara Luno and I'm president of the St. Brain chapter. Um, also sitting here right below me in my screen is Dan Wolford, who's our conservation committee chair. And um, St. Brain has been involved in a stream management plan for uh, over a year now. Um, I think it's one of the first ones kicked off uh, on the front range. Uh, and the St. Brain Left Hand Water Conservancy District um, were the principal uh, fiscal agent for that um, stream management plan and we contracted um, biohabitats um, to facilitate it and compile everything. So um, we're supposed to see our re final report next week. So we're pretty excited about that. That first phase of our stream management plan is really a, a, a St. Vrain and Left Hand Creeks watershed scale assessment. And uh, what we're going to probably see in the next several weeks is a reconvening of our stakeholders um, to look at near-term priorities. So I could see us identifying conceptual pro projects that are not going to be shovel ready. Um, that seems pretty clear to me. But um, I think, you know, the question that Gary brings up about scale 
is really important. And maybe that's where the portfolio concept can really value, you know, bring value to the chapters that um, are working on, you know, smaller projects, but there's a theme. And, um, and hopefully we can, um, you know, jointly pursue funding or, you know, whatever it is around some of these portfolio concepts. Does that address what you're thinking, David? That's great. I, I'd yeah. love like to from, hear. From our stream management plan, I would say we kind of break out into kind of four major areas and there's probably some other areas I'm not thinking of, but infrastructure, fish passage, sediment transport, and in-stream flow because I've had I don't know how many people contact me in the last two weeks asking me, have you seen how low the stamp brain is? <laughs> and um, so those are kind of what's falling out, uh, out out of the planning process. And I would just say, you know, a, a big part of going through the planning process is right up the alley of what Richard described of getting the stakeholders together. Um, so if there's any benefit that comes out of the plan, it's just the fact that um, there was a vehicle to get all the stakeholders together and talk about managing St. Brain Left Hand Creeks um, in a post, you know, post flood restoration and actually talk about long term management and what our goals are around, you know, the forecasted growth and maintaining our agricultural community too. I don't want to be the only one speaking. <laughs> I'll give someone else a chance. I'm trying to unmute a number of folks here uh, in the hopes that the, uh, some other folks might hop in here. Um, David, Dick Jeffries. Yes. Uh, just to kind of throw a couple of things in, I guess, for whoever's benefit about what may or may not be shovel ready. So up north, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, Dick Jeffries, I'm conservation chair for Rocky Mountain Flycasters, uh, effectively Fort Collins, Loveland, Greeley, Windsor. Um, so we're, we um, are, are a member of uh, stream management planning that is being done by the Big Thompson Watershed Coalition. Uh, the interesting thing about that is the coalition, you know, is, Good things and bad things about um, all the work that our you know various chapters along the Front Range did in starting coalitions. Um, you become part of a bigger group, and sometimes you don't always get to work in the areas that you want to. Um, and so that's true to a certain extent with Loveland. So the their stream management plan geographic area is from I-25 to Canyon Mouth, and our chapter waters only cover about the top. I'm going to say seven to nine miles of that reach. And those are probably the least impacted waters of that entire stretch from Canyon Mouth to I-25. So while all those conversations are still going on, um, if I was going to be forced to put money on it, I would bet that the first shovel ready project is going to be out of our geographic mission scope. And so I don't know how that plays into um, you know, currying favor with, you know, TU's involvement. Um, on the pooter. Uh, if, if I can I, share one quick thing. Yep. Knowing about conceptual projects that aren't shovel ready is also very helpful. The, the, the project list is intended to include a whole range. The, the immediate gubernatorial emphasis on trying to find resources to help advance is going to be focused on those that are shovel ready. But it, it says so. If you have other projects that are maybe a little more conceptual or on a slightly longer time horizon, we want to hear about those too, for sure. Okay, sure. Okay. And then on the pooter, um, a, a lot of similar things at play. Um, it's such a you know long river. Um, I-25 to Canyon Mouth basically is uh, City of Fort Collins playground. And they're pretty... Uh, um, you know, they're, they're pretty protective of who does what and says what. So... I, I don't even know if there'll ever be a stream management plan on that reach. Um, and then I'll just leave it at from Canyon Mouth up. 
since as of today, my guess is we're probably now home to the largest wildfire ever in the history of Colorado. Um, I'm guessing that we probably surpassed the uh, Pine Creek fire today, uh, the way it blew up. Uh, all bets are off on what are going to be priorities on the upper pooter. Um, and I think any stream management planning up there is just going to get kind of put on hold until after we've had time to do an assessment on impacts to the entire drainage because that that burned all the way up into headwaters. So we have impacts there from Canyon Mouth all the way to headwaters. Um, and I think everybody's just trying to well, everybody's waiting for the fire to die down enough so somebody can get in and start figuring out what's going on. So I, I don't, again, identifying things conceptually or in the pipeline right now, I don't think we're able to add much of anything at this time. Your last comment raised the question I wanted to toss out to the group. And that's, you know, some of us are looking, you know, and, and Basins that are more focused, say, on the South Platte, look back to the Hayman fire and, and the issues there. You all are steering something that's now uh, surpassed that, most likely, uh, um, as of today. Is one of the themes for our thinking about portfolio work in our basins uh, responding to and mitigating the risk of wildfire for our fishermen? Um, I, I think it's going to be, <clears throat> I, I think it's something that TU should be in the, throughout the West. I think it's something that TU should be looking at very seriously because I don't, I don't think this is an anomaly. Um, I don't think I'm alone in that opinion, but I think this is just an example. I mean, we look at what's going on in California, Oregon, Washington. It's, not a, it's only a question of when, not if. So this is gonna become more common, th especially throughout the West. And I think that anything that we can do to look at restoration as well as pre-fire mitigation, I, I think are key and crucial. Um, and what we're starting to see now is communities now starting to realize, unfortunately, a little bit Johnny come lately, but they're starting to realize the importance, especially of pre-fire mitigation. Um, and, and so I know we're short for time. I'll leave it at that. With one last addition, if somebody could just make a note about Nationals' uh, potential change to their mission and vision. That there was a couple of options there. One had the word resilient or resilience in it, and the other one resilient was omitted. I think TU is running a fool's errand if in any way they ever omit now the word resilient, because monies are getting stretched so thin that if we don't focus on creating resilient fisheries instead of these little disparate groups that can or can't survive in a catastrophic event, uh, I, I think we're setting ourselves up for failure. So I, I think resilience has to be really a key driver in all the work that we do. Thanks, Dick. Um, see, anybody else have an initial thought or I, I may see if, if John, I uh, just uh, looking to get you unmuted to see if uh, you had any insights on how maybe the Denver chapter might want to uh, engage with the water plan or look at these portfolio concepts. You know, um, yeah, I'm with the, the, the Denver TU chapter. Um, one thing I've been looking at is um, federal legislation uh, that would create a citizen conservation corps and how that could be directed to forest health. Um, you know, regardless of which party wins, they're all talking about a, um, a stimulus package. And uh, Representative Nagus has proposed a, a citizen conservation corps that would focus on forest health. Um, the, the Biden um, infrastructure plan has a citizen conservation corps uh, directed to a lot of the things that are central to the Colorado water plan. It, and it seems to me that we ought to be working with our delegations and the Department of Natural Resources and the basin roundtables to figure out how to use um, 
this resource that will, you know, I, th I think it's um, maybe probable that we'll see something like this conservation core within the next year. Uh, and it looks to me like it'd be a tremendous opportunity that we ought to, we could start working on it right now. Great thought, John, and underscoring how, how our advocacy work can and should be dovetailing with uh, with these efforts uh, um, uh, in this broader conservation visit. We've got less than a minute. Anybody have a final thought that hasn't come up that you want to, to, to share with the group before we get booted back to the full room? David Dick Jeffries. Um, yes, kind of kind of in tandem with what John just talked about and you know the a civilian conservation corps something like that that's a great way of, of figuring out how to get boots on the ground and it's a wonderful thought I think the, another th area that we have to start focusing on is where's all this money going to come from in the future um, and I I think that we internally need to start having a debate among uh, TU about approaching our water utility and water managers for a conservation fee that is tied directly to water consumption um and and that me you know i mean you know we got i don't know what it is three hundred and fifty thousand people up here if, you know 10 bucks a year from you know a person or whatever it might be uh, all right richard uh we're back from the south flat and we are back as well. We, we, we got out just eight, sec eight seconds before it caved in. So we have 15 minutes left. I don't know, does, um, do the um, different basin representatives want to real quick go through what they thought they heard and um, um, generally what, uh, what the people in their group were, were thinking? I, I think we can, I, I can certainly do mine. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and start it off, but just, um, I think that generally the portfolio concept was, was accept, accepted by the people in, in my um, breakout room. Um, they thought that defining what that meant and its future management, um, and by management, the relationship between the chapter and, and staff would be um, and, and, and what form that would take and, and what form the projects would take and things like that. Um, just, just to make sure that, you know, they weren't, people weren't sort of being pushed in a direction maybe they didn't want to go or, or, you know, exceeding their, their, their capacity um, to do projects and things like that. Um, I think that there was a, there was a general comfort um, in looking at its organization and, and its strategic um, aspects. Um, and we we also talked a little bit about the, the capacity challenges, but I think if you're if you're looking at a portfolio, it doesn't mean you need to do the whole portfolio right right away. I mean, the portfolio is going to come together incrementally, um, and, and and that's how all of this all of the staff on this call do things anyway. I mean, you know, we all we, we don't have the time to manage you know um, that level or that scale of, of, of project. Um, so those are the things we did, and I think that uh, we were also talked a little bit about the projects list, and um, you know I think that everybody will be thinking about the projects um, within the Colorado Basin. We have three um, different IWMPs or stream management plans going right now. Um, the Blue River um, IWMP will certainly be contributing, and we already have put new projects onto the Summit Region list as part of the Basin Roundtable um, projects list. Um, and I know that the Middle Colorado um, IWMP just finished up. They have generated 56 new projects um, uh, that they are contributing to the roundtable list. And um, the Eagle is still struggling trying to um, uh, play around with Colorado Springs' uh, models for Homestake 2. Uh, but those are being reviewed and they should be able to start contributing some projects. And they, in fact, they already have. Um, they, they did in the, in the summer update. But that's really where all of, all of our projects uh, are coming from mostly is they're filtering up through these IWMPs. And fortunately in each case, TU is, is represented at that IWMP and, and SMP level um, or, or processes in, in all cases. Usually it's, it's just me sitting there, but in some cases we're getting actual chapter members like from the Eagle and things like that um, coming to those meetings. So we'll try to um, 
try certainly try to expand that. But that's basically what uh, that's basically my wrap. Nellie, do you want to go next? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. And and, Why not? and Kevin uh, as well. Um, I think that uh, in terms of the portfolio, I, I think people were uh, somewhat unclear um, about what that is all about. And it sounds like there are going to be additional opportunities to learn more about it. Uh, so we didn't have any um, specific outcome other than there is a need for more education. And this obviously this forum does not give enough time for people to really understand what that is all about. So I think there was a desire to understand it a little bit better. Um, we talked about projects and, and uh, uh, it sounds like the Rio Grande has got a pretty uh, definite list going, going through. I think the Southwest can do a little bit more in terms of bringing in environmental and recreational projects. And uh, we uh, talked about uh, um, doing a follow-up with the, with the chapter. Um, uh, in terms of the management plan, the stream management plans, we have two stream management plans going on uh, in the Southwest and talked a little bit about the background of that and the, the, the core uh, need to understand what the environmental and recreational water supply needs are because it is that information is lacking and those efforts help do that. But at the same time, as you said, Richard, they also provide an opportunity to have stakeholders come up with multi-benefit type of projects. And uh, those two efforts in, in here in the Southwest at least um, are not quite there yet. Uh, but uh, we also talk, put a lot of emphasis on the importance to try to get uh, these projects in the IPP list, given the limited funding and uh, not, not very bright outlook into the future in terms of additional funding for projects. Um, Kevin, did I, or anybody else that was in that group, anything that I left out? I think you did a good job covering it, Millie. So Carrie, do you want to, Carrie or Jesse, you want to? Um, Richard, excuse me, can yeah. you um, state the basin that the folks are going to talk about too, for clarity? For oh yeah, who... uh, Carrie and Jesse. Uh, so, yeah. so we just heard from the Southwest and the, and the Rio Grande, <laughs> um, and you heard from the Colorado and um, the Yampa White Green. Um, well, most of the Colorado, but Brian Hodges in our group. Um, and now uh, if we can get Carrie and Jesse, uh, one or the other or both um, to recap uh, for the Gunnison Uncompagre North Fork. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was pretty easy. We only had one participant. So we had more staff than we did to you uh, volunteers tonight, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I do think it points to the importance of building a stronger feedback loop between what we're doing on the ground and what uh, what our what our boots in the ground folks are wanting to do our chapter members and Brian Hess our guy from the upper Gunnison he had a good idea which is you know it's important to create these portfolios and to identify projects and to be providing input um, Richard you said it well and you said the, the value that we bring to the state water planning process is there's so many of us within TU, we know so much about the, the importance of cold water fisheries, but also how we can, you know, where projects are. Brian thought a, a good idea is not only serve as a clearinghouse of ideas, but maybe have an active uh, project list, maybe something that is um, our, like an ArcGIS base or something like that. I know we've had that in the past, but keeping that active within our TU chapter so that it's not just hey, this is where we are working, or this is where we're spending money now, but here's where we're thinking about developing a project, and here's the pro project participants. Um, in the case that Jesse and I normally do, it's with ag, par ag partners, but maybe also where we would like to be working and um, identifying resource concerns. I thought that was a really good idea and something we should keep front of mind, and um, also the lesson I'm taking home from this, I got to keep just working with my chapters and, and 
one-on-one -on -one and um, it's difficult now to go say you're going to be attending meetings but somehow having that one-on-one -on -one contact with our chapter folks to stress the importance of building um, our IPP lists and feeding information into those. Thanks, Kerry. Yeah, and I think it's I, I think it's important too to, to to stress that this is a this is a two way street. I mean, you know, um, staff staff is going to you know, I think generally trying to make a make an effort to get to more meetings and to get people involved and, and to start thinking and talking about these portfolio things. But you know, um, on the on on the flip side, um, we need to have people who are willing to put in some some effort from the, from the chapter side too. Because um, that, yeah. keep, that, that keeps us going. That's a really good point. And something that Jesse and I talk about sometimes is the fact that most of our projects are on private property. They're with private landowners. They are, um, so like some of Jesse's work is really confusing uh, studying consumptive use of plants at different elevations. That's just not that enticing to chapter folks who are not getting your feet wet with that um, but it is important so if we can relate that to how do we how does that relate to keeping a, a fishery alive um, we can do that work and, and we can show the how that relates to the stuff we want to get done yeah and, and you know that's the kind of thing that could be you know on that arc gis system or something like that it says you know here we've gotten this many people all you know, working our way up the Tamich or whatever, um, that are all in this all in this program now, and they're all monitoring their soil moisture, and so they're not just diverting all the time full bore uh, or whatever, but they're but they're backing it off a little bit and letting a little bit go by their head, head gate, uh, you know, and maybe it's in, 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 and maybe it's helping. So, I think that is all of us. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we need to hear from the South Platte. Uh, and was it in Arkansas as well? But uh, I, I can report back on the South well, Platte. And, and the Arkansas. Uh, I will echo um, uh, Melly's comment about, uh, you know, needing to continue to, to, to share what this portfolio concept really means uh, and understand it at different scales. That was an issue that came up with our group is how chapters can look at the kinds of resources or efforts they can bring to bear and how that fits into these larger portfolios. That said, you know, there's a sense that certain themed portfolios could really make a lot of sense as a way to put those efforts into a context and, and help people sort of see where localized efforts fit into a bigger picture. Um, for our basin and potentially beyond, some themes for portfolios that, that came up, um, uh, you know, the example I had initially shared and that to some degree is already starting in a portfolio type approach is greenback restoration. The two other notable ones that came up were uh, Fish Passage uh, as sort of a larger vision along the Front Range, um, uh, where so many diversion structures have, have severed that on many of our major rivers, and where there's opportunities now to, to, to reconnect um, in a more systematic way all along the Front Range. And uh, wildfire issues, both, both response and mitigation to reduce vulnerability. I suspect uh, in the year where it looks like we have the two largest fires in state history, both this year, um, that's going to be a, a particularly resonant issue with a lot of people. Um, uh, and I guess uh, in terms of involvement in the plan, we have a number of chapters in the South by Basin that are or are getting engaged with stream management planning. And as you said, you know, huge value both in understanding the needs, but also those stakeholder relationships and great opportunity to start building some of those that would be the building blocks for getting things done in the future. Um, and we sort of closed with a couple of things that ventured more into the policy realm that I wanted to share. Um, uh, and it was a recognition that getting these things done takes resources, um, you know, way beyond what we obviously have just in house. And uh, a couple things came up in that regard. One was financial. How do we build that? You know, is there room to look at things like a, uh, a fee on water use or certain subsets of water use that would help fund some of the uh, ongoing efforts? It's you know, whatever the solution is. Uh, we flagged that as, as an area that needs some attention um, from to use how, how we're going to fund this long term, um, these kinds of efforts uh, at scale. Um, and I'll editorialize by adding that, that, you know, our traditional model, which is dependent on severance tax from, from oil and gas, 
obviously is not sustainable in the long term. And so we, you know, it's something that sooner or later we're going to have to grapple with and come up with a better solution. Uh, and, and then on the opportunity front, uh, one of our participants noted the uh, ongoing effort in conjunction with some of the different stimulus proposals and a, a likelihood that, that, frankly, regardless of the outcomes of the elections, might, might get some traction is creating some form of a citizens conservation core again. And could that become a uh, resource for trying to implement some of these efforts under the water plan uh, across a range of different different uses? So um, uh, I, I believe there's a, 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 I don't know if it was introduced or if it's a, a talking draft, but uh, Representative Goose had, had that pulled into one of his legislative packages. And that may be a place where on the policy side, we can be thinking about another opportunity to mobilize resources to help with the, with making these portfolios and associated efforts possible. Thank you, David. Um, Dan, do you want to have a go? Sure, I'll wrap it up. Um, so we're at the, the Arkansas Basin. Uh, it was Reed, Dill, Reed Dills and I. Um, so we talked mostly about fishing, a little bit about stream management plans. Um, but uh, really, the Arkansas Basin is a little behind the rest of the state uh, when it comes to um, some of the stream management planning efforts uh, and, and then the water plan. There's a lot of groups doing good work, but there's kind of a lack of coordination that's been able to bring people together um, ar around a, a common set of goals and objectives. That's hopefully changing here. Um, we're getting the upper... Arkansas Watershed Partnership formed, um, which is a combination of agriculture producers, uh, nonprofits, and land managers in the in the basin. Uh, and we're talking about opportunities for stream management plans and different projects. So hopefully we'll be able to move the needle on that. And it's a great way for our, our chapters um, throughout the basin to be to be engaged there. Um, one one thought on the portfolio, uh, you know, Reed also mentioned that there's definitely a need to kind of flush this thing out a little more. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities with it and it'd be nice to see some sort of coordinated effort between national TU staff and CTU and our, our chapters um, to put together a plan <clears throat> or some sort of larger portfolio that Maybe it's ArcGIS where you have different layers for connectivity and fish passage, or maybe it's uh, native trout strongholds, wildfire risk, those kinds of things. Um, and maybe that's a stream management plan grant in itself. But um, uh, that's, I think, something that could really bring a lot of chapters and, and members um, opportunities to engage. Uh, and that's something that we, we talked about a lot too, outside of the Dolly Vardens and you know, tarpon and cutthroats. So that's it from us. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so we are at 8.32. Um, so I think we'll kind of try and uh, wrap it up. Uh, I just wanted to <clears throat> say thanks to all the, all my fellow staff and the CTU staff that are, that are here. Um, it was a, it's a really big turnout uh, from, from that perspective. And I think, um, I think generally, generally everybody is either doing it or is, or is maybe a, a little bit more recommitted to reconnecting with their local chapters and, and uh, really trying to get this, uh, get this portfolio thing in, in some form or another that, that, that fits the chapter needs um, off the ground. Um, you know, and really starting to use that, that, that concept. And I think it's important to you know that that the use of that concept fits into whatever the chapter wants to be, wants to do um, and things like that. So, so really it should be tailored to, to the specific basin and, and, and to the chapter's needs and goals. So I think that's, that's important. And I think everyone will be sensitive. I, I think all the staff will be sensitive to that and, and, and they're aware of you know, what's, what's happening in their own neighborhood. So um, I guess uh, if there's no other questions or, or, or comments or anything, um, I think we can pretty much wrap it up. I, I think what we will try and do is, is maybe sort of write down a few notes, um, each of the uh, basin rep representatives about how 
people answered questions and things like that and, and sort of put it into a you know maybe a little bit of a summary um, and then and then we can use that um, for our own edification in, in the future. And, and then if anybody wants access to it, um, they can look at it as well. But I think it's really, it, it's gonna depend on, you know, the staff that's present here right now, um, reconnecting if they're not already intimately connected with their, with their chapters and, uh, you know, starting, starting a, a, a dialogue about, you know, what do you want to be, and, and and how does it fit into some of these um, some of these concepts that we've we've talked about tonight? So, with that, um, I think that's all I have. You know, anything else, David? Uh, just a, a big thank you to you, Richard. Thank you for for conceiving and, and pulling this together, uh, um, and all your efforts on it. Really appreciate it. And everybody else, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, our next uh, digital rendezvous session is Saturday morning. We initially were avoiding the presidential debate, which no longer is happening tomorrow, but uh, gives us a couple of days off. And uh, Saturday morning, we'll be having a uh, set of panels uh, along with the keynote address from CPW Director Prenzlo. So I hope many of you can join us then. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And hopefully, this is a good future for us. <laughs>